Hello everyone, this is a Charles Dickens book review, but with an angle and a focus on the actual books themselves. From potentially a book collecting angle, whereby, um, and because of, I seem to have ended up with a load of books that are all different. So, the first one, and this is all in chronological order, is... This one, which of course, if you uh, if you know about Charles Dickens, then um, he uh, did start around about the middle of the 1830s, f shortly after the Great Reform Act, having been born in 1812. And he began with Sketches by Boz, which is this one. This is a kind of a nice, but older... Penguin Classics Edition. He then followed that with the Pickwick Papers, obviously, which I don't have a copy of. But then came Oliver Twist in 18... kind of 1837-8. So this is not really even the Victorian era. And this is... Uh, out of focus. Is it in focus? Hmm. Yeah. Why is it out of focus? That's not it. Yeah. Okay. So this this is the the Oxford World Classics New Era edition with all these slightly stylized black and white type uh, front covers. I believe I have. Yeah. So there's that one. That was about 450 pages. After, um, <clears throat> after the Pickwick Papers caught the, uh, after the, after that, 1838-9 was Nicholas Nickleby, which I also don't have a copy of, but which is my equal favourite novel by Charles Dickens, which for me, I think absolutely fantastic. It just has all the key elements that makes up, um, I don't know, uh, a fairly, fairly not untypical story, a fairly not untypical book, a novel. A beginning and an end, a kind of a reluctant hero who turns into turns out to embrace basically being a hero, and he kind of hopefully sort of saves the day at the end of it. And there are, um, what shall we say, uh, snakes and ladders and um, roundabouts on the way, and it's just generally good. It's just a good novel about a good thing. What it's about is good. Okay, um, I don't have a copy of that, but I do... Whoa, what happened afterwards? The old Curiosity Shop. That was 1840-41, and I don't have a copy of that either. <laughs> but I do have the next one, which is Barnaby Rudge. And this is uh, obviously every man's library hardback um, um, yeah, edition. Which apparently your wondrous hardcore literature dude tends to rate uh, these uh, this bit rather than that, I suppose. I'm not quite sure why. Perhaps it's something to do with all the dots. But I particularly like this th this this edition. Perhaps it's my favourite edition, because the front cover is not just any old nice little thing. What it is, is, is in actual fact a scene of British troops being billeted on Hyde Park. Around about the time of the Gordon Riots, which is when this book is, uh, is set. And it's, the actual image is a watercolour painted by a guy who was there at the time. So what we are looking at is, well, something exactly like it. And somehow or other, that, um, that just has me on, a, on, a, on another level, on another uh, um, a higher level of, um, of appreciation. Just the whole thing is just, just a really nice thing. Great thing. 
Very good. Every man library. Very pleased with that one. Um, the next one. Um, it's a bit of a contrast to the other one in certain ways. The next one is not his novel, but it's American Notes. And that was from 1842. And for me, I think that has to be one of the front covers, perhaps of all time. Tell me I'm wrong. Um, with um, good reason. Very interesting book. I, I, I would recommend it, if only for he... Charles Dickens himself... Um, what does he do? He takes a ship out to America. Um, the description of his journey in the ship going out to America on the Atlantic is perhaps worth the cover price alone, let alone the rest of it. Um, we'll leave the rest. Uh, he's a bit negative about America, um, so that might be interesting to uh, different um, different viewpoints. But we'll leave it at that. The next, the next one is, yeah, Martin Chuzzlewit. But again, this is Oh, well, wait a minute. That, that was, yeah, that was a Penguin classic, but that's the newer one with the nice um, um, colour, uh, photo, colour image on the front. But the newer one with the, yeah, with the white band going around. This is another older one, but as you can see, compared to Sketches by Boz, has a frame. And is otherwise pretty similar, but evidently they did a little variety, or they decided the whole of sketches by Boz needed to be there for whichever reason. Anyway, I chose this one partly because, again, all of these are secondhand and they're all from charity bookshops, I think, every single one of them. Mm -hmm. No, they're not actually, but anyway, they mostly are. Uh, terrific front cover. The stagecoach features in 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 Martin Chuzzlewit rather significantly. And again, this is just another another nice book. And this is my other. Uh, this is perhaps my um, top uh, Charles Charles Dickens uh, novel. I think it's terrific. I didn't think an awful lot of the Pickwick Papers. Um, I, I thought Nicholas Nickleby was fantastic. I didn't think an awful lot of the old Curiosity Shop. Dombey and Son has its uh, merits. But this, this for me, is, um, is the best of the group with Nicholas Nickleby. Terrific. I, I kind of sort of laboured somewhat up to about page two or three hundred and thereafter cruised through the rest of it. Terrific stuff. After Martin Chelsewood, we have David Copperfield, I think, which is what I am reading. Right. Oh, no, he does a Christmas carol. He does a Christmas carol in about 1842, and it's fabulously successful and sells thousands and thousands and thousands of copies. Thereafter, he does Dombey and Son, 1846-8, which I don't have a copy of. And then David Copperfield, 1849-50. This is a, a also a, a Oxford World Classics, but as you can see, it's the the older older edition. The newer one's got just a picture of a young lad on the front. Somehow or other, this seems appropriate in a way. I mean, not not that the young lad is not appropriate; it's very appropriate in the first hundred pages. But the yeah, this picture. And what is it? It's um, um, it's Hungerford Stairs from 1814. Yeah, uh, in London, evidently. So that's pretty amazing. That's, that's a, from a real painting from 1814, which seems to me to be pretty nifty. Yeah. Then we have Bleak House. But this is evidently an Atlantic books 
for some reason, a crime classics, presumably Bleak House, has something to do with crime. But I know nothing about it. And look forward to to reading it. Nice thing. How about that? Second hand? And pretty good name. Whoops. Okay, so the next one after that is another Oxford World classic, but this time is the one before the other one. If I can say that, which I probably can. I think this is the newer one, and this is the, the, the previous one. But of course both are with the nice white bands for the name of the book and so forth. The lower part of the book. Yeah. What a thin book, by comparison. I mean, whoa. That's Bleak House. That's Hard Times. And well, that's American Notes. And yeah, not, not such a great uh, discoloration on the the sides of the thing. But that was one pound fifty from a charity shop, so I thought, well, that's good enough. Pretty good. And before that I bought Little Dorrit. Which is also uh, the same as that one. And I just thought I'd show it because it's got a nice front cover. And again it's just a nice thing. Book collecting. Yeah. Okay, the one after that. Uh, Dickens, I think he has a bit of a break from uh, a writing, just a little bit. After Hard Times, which was 1854. Thereafter, he does... What does he do? He does A Tale of Two Cities and Great Expectations. But when does he do The Uncommercial Traveller? No, I can't see it. I absolutely can't see it anyway. Anyway, I think the next one is The Uncommercial Traveller. And this is also an Oxford World Classic, but this is a, a hardback, which was made for America, if I remember rightly. End papers. First version of scene, Madison Avenue. Park Avenue. USA. There we go. And it's just a really, really nice book. Recommend that one just, just as, just as a nice book. Good jacket. Very similar to the. I think they used the same thing for the, uh, the English paperback of this. But this is just a nice thing in hardback. Yeah, and after that was the Tale of Two Cities. But this one is vintage. Evidently, and one of the key differences about the vintage series, no intro, nothing. You get the contents, list of illustrations, author's preface, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. <clears throat> it was the age of... No, it was the epoch of belief and the epoch of incredulity. Great stuff. Um, yeah. Great Expectations is the one that follows after that. And this I bought today. And uh, there is that. That's also a Penguin Classics, but that's the newer one with... Line drawings, which is obviously derived from all the illustrations from when the books were, were first published. And I'm not quite sure whether or not these are part of the same series, or whether there's a sub-series or not. I'm not sure. 
Evidently, there are um, a bunch of these with line drawings that are all the Penguin Classics white band. So there we are. There they are. What follows, obviously, is what follows. I don't remember. Edwin Drood. Oh, our mutual friend and and Edward Edwin Drood um, does uh, does follow, which I don't have. But <laughs> maybe I shall get them in completely different editions by different companies. There they are. And if anyone knows anything about this uh, picture, can they please let me know? I received it from a company online in error and they told me that, that that I could just keep it I found a frame for it evidently it looks a bit Tolstoy to me but I could be wrong uh, qu quite easily I've got no idea what it is if anyone that does know very much appreciate if you could um, tell me so and this is my uh, by the way this is my pewter mug pewter mug proper Sheffield uh, you probably can't see that Proper old, old boys, pewter mug, cracking stuff. Suffolk's finest. Okay, um, that's the end of my little Charles Dickens uh, review. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Book collecting and um, reading Charles Dickens. So it's Happy New Year for, for 2024 and bye for now. <laughs>